Viewers, welcome back this morning to the Tobago Updates Morning Show. Our guest at this time is Kizel Jackson, former deputy political leader of the PDP. And this morning, viewers, it is rising from the ashes. Kizel Jackson, good morning and welcome to Tobago Updates. Thank you very much. Good morning to Tobago Updates as well as your viewership. Thank you. It's really good to have you on the program with us. I, I want to start this morning by asking the question, who is Kizel Jackson? Now, mm -hmm. all we know about Kizel Jackson is what we've seen in the media, social media. Mm -hmm. Who is Kizel Jackson? Mm -hmm. I, I don't like the Hulkian um, Kizel Jackson is, but I can give you um, a little bit of foundation of my backbone, mm -hmm. um, what amounted to who I am now. I have been a lecturer at the UWI in psychology, sociology, and political science for more than 12 years. I also opened up my own secondary school, um, doing for really expats as well as the transition from Cape to Cambridge. Yes. I am an author, internationally um, renowned author in Amazon, Amazon, Amazon Prime. I also represented Trinidad as well as the wider Caribbean for travel and destination show known as Mira Travel Show. But more than ever, I am a humanitarian, philanthropist. I think is my greatest legacy to give back. Why do I give so much? Because my family was born out of poverty. Many do not know. Mm -hmm. My grandmother, having her origins right here in Tobago, um, we lived in a little board house with an outdoor toilet that's called a latrine. People see all the, the, the glitters and the fancy vehicles house now and the we live in, and they do not know who I am and why I continue to champion the cause of the working class and the proletariat. And that, in a nutshell, is mm -hmm. Del Jackson. Jackson, yes. All right, now to, 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 to the meat of the matter again, I think it was very important for our viewers to understand mm -hmm. who you are, where you came from. What was it initially that attracted you to the PDP? You were the you know, the former deputy mm -hmm. political leader, mm -hmm. but what made you, what, what drew you to the organization initially? What I will say is very clear because in Trinidad and Tobago, um, our government has cast shadow over democracy and rather you see plutocracy. That is a government controlled by the wealthy, the bourgeois, the interests of the poor. They don't have a voice. They are voiceless. They are muzzled. There's not proper representation. There's a growing divide between the rich and the poor that we see in Trinidad. Many are crying out for just the basics. They are asking for what? Food, shelter, water. Um, this should not be, especially a country like Trinidad that experienced more than three booms already. We have a heritage stabilization fund that during COVID was not well articulated to, to help the working class man. I recognize that I have been traveling all over helping others, helping uh, many different countries, many different nations. And right home here, in, in my own country, when I came back to Trinidad, I recognized that the poor are suffering gravely. But you don't see that picture in the media. The media is plastered with a perception. Again, it is a hypodermic syringe, an image, an illusion of what really Trinidad and Tobago is. But when you begin to go down on the ground, my philanthropy and humanitarian work sent me back on the ground for me to see the reality. And that reality was grim. I remember sitting and having two senior officials in the PNM, and they would have told me that there's no chance that the PDP can win um, this election. I said to them, I am almost sure that they would. Let's go back a little bit. I remember sending Dr. Keith Rowley a WhatsApp message mm -hmm. telling him that more is needed for the poor. Um, at that time, he would have spent, I think, was over $500 million on light bulbs rather than distributing money to the poor and the downtrodden during COVID. Meeting them where they yes, were. yes. Okay. I felt a sense of neglect. I felt, I felt a sense of abandonment. I said, Kezel, what more can you do? We all sit and complain. The government isn't doing that. The government isn't doing this. But when we complain, no one listens. So I decided to put my foot in. I saw Watson Duke. I did not know him from before. I should tell mm -hmm. you that. 
I saw Watson Duke as a man brave enough to champion the cause of the working class. I would have had some prior knowledge of his fights as a trade unionist, um, taking up a, a David and Goliath fight, I would say. I would have watched that maybe the PDP did not have all the resources. The treasury belonged to the government of the day, but the treasure, which is the heart of the people, to beg to unions themselves, they would have circumference, they would have engulfed, they would have shown heart, and they came out there by their ballot. And they exercised their democratic will in the most resounding way. That you saw the underdog, you saw the party with all odds against them rivaling such an election. I remember going to sleep hearing that it was 15, an all-out whitewash victory. Right. Then waking up, of course, you know, that democracy has to be done and appear to be done. And then here in 14 one, and I say beautiful, maybe this is it for Trinidad. It is a vehicle that maybe can carry us not just to Tobago, but national victory. All right. So you decided to throw your hat in the ring, as you said, or put your foot in. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Um, you, you did that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we're hearing now that you have resigned. Mm -hmm. What was it? What went awry? What Between your um, looking at the, the possibilities of the PDP and the possibilities for Trinidad, mm -hmm. um, what happened along the way that caused your letter of resignation? Many things happened, not just one. But let me start here. I am not one that when things go sour, I wish to debase the progressive democratic patriots because it is still a very young party, a party in its embryonic stages. There is a lot of pruning that sometimes can take place and adjustments. However, the leadership of the progressive democratic patriots, and when I say leadership, let me be more specific, the leader, the political leader, owner and founder, as he, as he um, vehemently loved to say, he has to make a successful transition from unionism into diplomacy. And I think it's that transition that he needs to adjust, he needs to realign his vision to see that I am no longer the rabble rouser. I am no longer the erratic fighter that the people want in, in union because it's always us against the government. Right. I am one that is vying for a public position of mayorship. And let's move forward, probably even position of becoming the next prime minister. So that will require a pain, sometimes painful adjustment because it's a personality that he would have engulfed for more than 12 years. So that transition, I would like to see not a tyrant because a tyrant is one that leads to intimidate, but a leader is one that leads to inspire. Does it mean that all is um, gloom and doom? No, I would not say that. The political landscape of Trinidad and Tobago is not static, but rather dynamic. I would say that we have seen many different things happening um, in many different parties. But the progressive democratic patriots, they are fighting in a political arena with seasoned politicians, right. with political parties that have been well established, founded and grounded. So in this transitional period, we would have things like this and we would have adjustments. However, it is more a personality concern than a party concern. More, more a personality mm -hmm. concern than a party mm -hmm. concern that Indeed. resulted in your letter yes. of resignation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, you indicated that you saw hope in mm -hmm. the PDP, mm -hmm. but yet... Um, Make it make sense. Okay. So now we have to follow the dots. Follow the dots where person, the personality, remember party is led by a person. Yes. So the personality of the figurehead of the party will sometimes filter into the party. The way sometimes a person may handle personal differences may over, over like a, a set and a subset in mass. Right. You have one circle, but you have another circle that overlaps the very first circle. Right. In the way he handled personal things, um, it was overlapping into party business. I am one that I would have preferred that he kept the, par the personal business personal and the party business for, for the party. What was taking place prior to my resignation is that Mr. Duke would have, I would have brought forward investors and well-wishers to this party. 
I did not come to the PDP with an empty hand and just well and, and well wishing. I came to the Progressive Democratic Patriots wanting, and I did help finance, bring in an excess of $3 million to this particular party. I came with probably my know-how, my drive, um, to deliver something that I know Trinidad and Tobago needs. When we were sexually involved, which everybody knows, it is no secret, Mr. Duke and I had many ups and downs. One of them amounted to him calling business persons that I was in business with, asking them if I had sexual relations with them, um, even talking about my personal life with persons that he does not know. These are not friends of his. These are persons that I am in a corporate relationship with, and he began calling to speak about me in the most smutty and vulgar and debasing way while I sit still as the deputy political leader of your party. So you are denigrating my name even in the political landscape. And that to me was paramount disrespect. How can I now sit and continue to follow your guidance? How can I now be honest with myself and Trinidad and Tobago and said, yes, I want you to continue to lead me because after your command, I am next in command and I want to sit with authority and said that, yes, I believe in your leadership. I don't want um, a level of hypocrisy plastered with just, um, I don't even know what to say, plastered with a lot of lies. I don't want that. I want when I stand, regardless of what it is, I stand in my truth. Now, initially, when Chief Farley Augustine and Dr. Faith B. Israel and other members of the Tobago Executive of the PDP um, pulled or distanced themselves from the party, um, you sided with Mr. Duke. Of course. You sided with Mr. Of Duke. Of course I did. You had a lot to say about mm -hmm. Chief Farley. Do you still stand on what you said then? Um, mm -hmm. Do you believe that at this point you should apologize to the chief? Uh, no. I stand you... in my position. Let me explain why. Now, there's also what we call hierarchy. Now, sometimes when we, when we begin to get emotional, we sometimes separate hierarchy from actuality. What was actually happening was that the chief sec was still a DPL. While being a DPL, I gave Mr. Watson Solomon Duke all respect, and he said so. I never in any way, while being his DPL, rescind his power. No, that, is, that, that should not and should never happen. Now, in the way Mr. Duke would have treated the matter um, behind private doors, I may have spoken to him or tell him that things can be handled differently. But in Trinidad space, I represent that face. When Tobago was beginning to crumble, I have to stand strong and give the political leader, which is still the leader of the party, that strength and support. Because in Trinidad, it will appear that all was falling down. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. As well, mm -hmm. there were allegations you made against the chief concerning his sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, when the chief and mm -hmm. Dr. Faith and other members distanced themselves. Mm -hmm. And we saw quite recently where the riff, the, <laughs> more than a riff between mm -hmm. yourself and Mr. Duke, mm -hmm. and there were allegations leveled, leveled against him as well concerning his sexuality. What I will say, it, let, me, let me just stick a pin in it. We live in a fruity society. Fruity, when I use the word fruity and research it, um, when I make, you said allegations, no, I ask the question. When I address the question to my brother Farley at that time, yes. I would have said, that's, that's yes, not right, your brother I would Farley. have said that these are some of the concern that came to us. Not saying that you are or you aren't, because there's no litigation against me, because I do not make statements that I cannot back up. So mm -hmm. I ask the question. Prior to that, what the viewers probably do not know, I have been reaching out to, I was reaching out to both um, chief sec, as well as the then deputy chief sec, for us to really keep, keep it on a down low, for us to find a solution forward. I, I was here in Tobago time and time again in meetings with both personalities as well as members of executive, well wishes and some advisors. So that spill that we eventually saw did not happen overnight. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, not allegations, but you were asking the questions. Yes, I was. Were there attitudes, behaviors, mm -hmm. something that you saw that mm -hmm. prompted the questions? It was information that came to us in terms of what was happening in Tobago and why certain people were being favored. Now, remember, I also have certain business in Tobago as well. Right. 
and people were coming forward and voicing their concerns. Now, a concern is not a fact. We get information and it is not factual. I did not come and say that he is right. this way. Um, so I think that for the purpose of discussion, it is a miss of me. Let us disseminate and move forward. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. But question here, mm -hmm. why put it in the minds of the persons? Because you indicated earlier on, you spoke about personality mm -hmm. and personality and what, what did you say? Um, politics mm -hmm. with regards to Mr. Duke. Mm -hmm. But why put the why why put the thought in the minds of the people? Did you stray away from the, the mm -hmm. politics to get into the personality, no. the personal no. aspects of, of the politics? Let me explain why. Now everything is relative based on where you sit and how you see. Yeah. Put it in mind, um, you already give a connotation that it is negative. Homosexuality I mean if the person is not. Just now. Homosexuality is not something that should be looked down upon. Um, I have relatives who are, who are gay, lesbians, homosexual. Actually, um, my dance instructor, to whom I was most comfortable with, he was gay. And I was most comfortable because I was abused as a child and I know he did not want me. <laughs> I was safe with him. So when we say, why put it out there as though we still in 2023 have these negative imaging, these mm -hmm. negative labels, these negative stereotypes, there are many sexual orientation. People choose to be bisexual, trisexual, homosexual, right. heterosexual. Granted. There are new terms coming as the, as the days go by. Granted, yes. So I wouldn't put anything in, in, an, in a negative box and say that this is all negative. If you are not that, you stand in your truth. Yeah. Okay, I'm just saying here, if a person is not, mm -hmm. if an individual is not, why put in the minds of persons um, that they are if they're not? But fine, we'll move on from there. Um, a question coming in from a viewer on the, sure. a viewer mm -hmm. or, or to the show this morning. How long have you known and financially assisted Mr. Duke um, during the THA election period? No, this was right after the THA, in December, yeah, right after the THA elections. Yeah. That you became a financier? I became a financier, I became actively involved, mm -hmm. and then later on, I, I was announced as an interim deputy political leader. Have you assisted Watson to obtain financing during the THA period? No, 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 no. I did not. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, this is International mm -hmm. Women's, Women's Day tomorrow, um, but this is Women's Week. Mm -hmm. In the minds of a lot of women out there, Giselle mm -hmm. Jackson, mm -hmm. you represent... For unfortunately, mm -hmm. now because of all that has been out there, put out there on social media about you, you represent all the women who have intervened in their marriages. Mm -hmm. You represent all the women who have been that third party, mm -hmm. resulting in a separation or divorce. Mm -hmm. How do you then? I mean, you look lovely this morning, yes. but how then do you sit? How then do you? Um, you're here, Women's Week. Mm -hmm. What is the message that you have? for women out there who see you as an ex, who see you as a no-no, mm -hmm. who see you as that third party mm -hmm. in every relationship. Yeah. So that is the anger, the hurt, the psychological displacement that you will get. Because I have sit in that seat at one point in time. At one point in time, I was that faithful wife. I've been married twice, huh? My life is a soap opera, yes. I have sit as a married wife, very faithful. At that time, I was Jehovah Witness. Um, my husband was unfaithful with several women. So I understand that public lash I would get. I understand those stones that will be thrown at me. And I accept it. I accept it because I once sat in that position. Had you asked me probably two years ago if I would have ever been an adulterous woman, if I would have ever slept with somebody else's husband, I would have blatantly watched you and tell you no. So to get the emotions coming out of these women, sometimes I may represent a woman that they probably have some repressed feelings for. Maybe that they are probably still going through the situation because sometimes knowing better is not always doing better. And what I would like to say for the others, salvation is for the sinners. We all fall. Say it one more time. Kizel Salvation Jackson. is for the sinner. We all fall. Today you may be standing and tomorrow you may be lying. Lying in what? Lying in a form of moral debauchery in a situation where it is a form of cognitive dissonance. Your attitude and behavior is not aligned. But if you reach to it, God can take you through it.
And it takes courage, it takes resilience to stand in the face of all the negatives and use the negative. Let it be a platform for something good. When the mess is thrown at you and you know you are accountable for it, take, take, take onerous of your actions and then become better. So my message to myself was, Kizel, don't be better. You did it already. And you know what? My God came for the prostitute. If you were to select that prostitute, you would have never selected her. My God came for the thief. If you were to select the thief, he would have never selected her. My God came for the murderer. Do you remember who David was? So in judging people, sometimes we need to look in the mirror and really see where we have fallen short as an individual and not judge from a standoffist approach. Because when I point a finger at you, I'm not pointing one. And people say one, but it's two. It's my index and it's also my thumb, but three more is pointing back at me. Mm. So before I go to pell stones at you, let me do some introspection into my personal life and see how I may have fallen and give people a chance. Forgiveness is very important. I too have to first forgive myself because I would have not only let down the wider society, but there's whom, my children. I am a mother. How has, how has this affected your your family have they been affected at all of course they would be how have they how has it affected them it is you have to understand how they look at me and i'm, I'm a very candid person my children knew of watson duke they knew and i mentioned to them that i don't hide my flaws i don't hide my wrongs i told them that I would have been preaching. I would have been uh, a publisher as a Jehovah Witness formerly years ago, talking about adultery, telling um, women who are living in sometimes promiscuous relationship or who are even fornicating. Because sometimes you only look at adultery. Is there a big sin and small sin? What about those women who are sleeping with a man that you're not married with? That is also sin. So are you saying that there are big sin and little sin in God's eye? So I told them, I said, my actions in no way. It is morally right. I said, but... We fall. We are humans. We have stain, but there's no excuse. We get up and we propel ourselves. We push ourselves to do better. What have you learned from this entire scenario? Mm -hmm. what, what's the lesson for you and for other women? I have learned many lessons. And what stands, what stands out to me is that Sometimes we leave God, but God does not leave us. And in the darkest moments, even though night may seem long, the sun will shine again. Morning will come. And every negative, every, even coming here, I am in a space where, of course, I know you'll bring up that with the chief sec. I am in a space where women would probably want to victimize slander, but I stand. I stand in that. I own it. I embrace it because that too will make me who I am and who I will become. It will make me a more formidable woman. It will make me a stronger person that one day I may have a story or even right now that may motivate someone that is drenched in a form of moral debauchery, that is drenched in a relationship that they, maybe they're trying to get out of. And it may not only be gender bias, it could also be a man. That is doing things that he know literally is wrong, but may not have the courage to stop. And this is me encouraging you and say, it wouldn't get all good immediately. But if we keep moving forward, even if it's one step at a time, we are going in the right direction. In life, you have spring tide, you have high tide, but you also have neap tide, and then you have low tide. Be able to embrace all tides, because the ocean will continue. Yeah. All right. How does you being here, how does you being here in Tobago benefit Tobago? And, and, mm -hmm. and the thing is, the, the question is, uh, when, when we put out the flyer yesterday mm -hmm. that Kizel Jackson was going to be on Tobago mm -hmm. Updates, the mm -hmm. comments, I'm sure you saw some of them on social media. No, I don't. I, I don't didn't. read. I don't okay. read those comments. I don't, I, I'm, I, I'm very careful with my mind. My mind is like a strain. I sift what goes in. And I try to protect myself from what come out as well. Okay. But what I will tell you, it is not why am I here. This program, like it or not, there's somebody that is sitting down right now 
that is motivated. There's somebody right now that is downtrodden. There's somebody right now that feel like giving up. There's someone right now who feel like all the odds are against him or against her. There's someone right now that is watching this Facebook live and will get that motivation. Despite whatever negative that is coming his or her way, to stand again, to rise again. Um, somebody right now may go into things with family, with friends, in the workplace, where all odds are against you, where you almost feel defeated and broken. But I am standing, and I say to you, you can stand again. And if it is just for that person, then my journey here, my flight here this morning, was well worth it. All right. I want to ask you here, what is next for Kizel Jackson? Mm -hmm. um, and again, the topic is rising from the ashes. Mm -hmm. um, would you agree that you were in the ashes or you've been in the ashes over the last few months? Mm -hmm. How then do you rise? What is next for you um, politically? <laughs> I want to ask personally here, but what is next for Kizel Jackson? What I will say is that if you ask me if I'm rising from the ashes, I will yes. tell you yes. I had to pick up my casket, but I am not taking along with me the curse. In terms of politics, I am not one to talk about moral absolutism, to say I will never do this and I will never do that, because we do not know what tomorrow will bring. But in my political fight for my people, I will continue if it is God's will. And I have been on the ground before politics. Before politics, I'm known in Trinidad as a humanitarian going out to villages and helping people. I am known for that. After politics, I continue. I'm on the ground in Trinidad. I'm fighting. You all probably would have seen what is taking place on the news with HGC and some of the residents there. I have been there fighting for their cause, supporting single mothers and matriarchal homes, I'm trying to see how best I could alleviate some of the, the turmoils of this transition. So I will continue to fight for the oppressed. This is who I am, and this is my call. I need to ask you here, do you mm -hmm. have any regrets about this, this scenario? Do you have any regrets about um, involving yourself with the PDP, meeting Mr. Duke? Um, do you have any regrets over this entire mm -hmm. um, scenario? What I would say, you know, when things are good, we embrace the good. But when things are bad, one must learn to embrace the bad. Because collectively, all your experiences in life, make you who you are today. The good experiences and the bad experiences. So I would not change and say, well, I wish I could erase the bad experiences. If I were to say, I wish I could erase probably the smutty comments that Mr. Duke would have made. I wish I could erase probably the vulgarization, the villain, I was villainized, I was criminalized. Um, I wish I could erase some of those things, but I cannot. So now I embrace all of it. I, I listen to the label, but I don't accept it. All right. Now, you've, you said earlier that mm -hmm. you do not believe that you owed Chief Fali an mm -hmm. apology. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone that you'd like to apologize to this morning? Yes, of course. I would like to apologize to all young women who are looking on at this program this morning. I would like to apologize to all girls this morning and tell you, young woman, know your worth. And keep on striving. Despite the fact that you are human, you will fall. You will err. But my sister, get up, stand up, carry your shoulders back, and keep on fighting. Mm -hmm. All right. And very quickly here, we'd like to get from you. I think we dealt, we dealt with a lot of our, our matters here. But tell us about some of what you've been involved in as well in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. um, you've been doing some work on the ground mm -hmm. as you continue to push forward. Is there a hope for politics, mm -hmm. uh, continued politics for Kizel Jackson mm -hmm. in the future? Kizel Jackson, every, every ending is another beginning. So I will say that this end is another beginning for me as well. The political landscape it has not come to an end. I would continue to pursue politics. I will continue to represent my people. What is my political direction? I leave that in the hands of God. Mm -hmm. Right. But what about the work you've been doing on the ground? Tell us what you've been up to in Trinidad. Recently, um, well, just last night, I was in Beetham Gardens. This is one of the downtrodden community, the oppressed community, the voiceless community in Trinidad. And... Uh, 
I went out there because the mothers and the older heads, they were calling out to me and Zikazel, we understand what happened, but we forgive you and we stand by you. I went out there to motivate and speak with the young ones um, because when people think about role model, they think about this hypocritical idealism of a perfect image. We are not perfect people. We are imperfect people, but imperfect people with a perfect heart can do better. And the difference between the ordinary and the extraordinary is just that person who wished to do extra. Right. Mm -hmm. One final question. Mm -hmm. um, when asked earlier concerning mm -hmm. apologies, mm -hmm. um, you do not believe that you owe Chief Ali an apology. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't hear an apology to Mr. Duke. Mm -hmm. If you felt that you didn't, so be it. But do you believe that you owe Mrs. Duke Mrs. Well, Watson then you are saying that maybe you weren't on my page. Because on my page, I made a public apology, not only to her, but also to her children. And that, to me, was necessary. It was right. Even if Mrs. Duke, um, because Mr. Duke says it, that she accepts who he is, that this is not the first time he's having um, a woman and woman and relationship. Maybe she accepts um, polygamy. My actions, I must own. And humility is very important. You know, there's a scripture that say, if, you, if there's something between you and your brother, put down your sacrifice and go and make peace with your brother before your sacrifice is accepted. I do not condone my actions, and I am not saying it is right. I went on my media platform, and I made a public apology, both to his wife and children as well as mine. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much there, Kizel Jackson. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for being on the program with us this morning. Mm -hmm. um, I know you've been making, uh, some, uh, someone said your rounds with mm -hmm. regards to the, 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 the press, uh, the media. Mm -hmm. uh, you were on several sessions yesterday mm -hmm. and today with us here on Tobago Updates. And I want to thank you for taking the time to be here with us. You're most welcome. Um, and I will tell you, viewers, that I did ask Ms. Jackson before the interview, mm -hmm. you know, what was off the limits? Mm -hmm. What question? Were there any questions? Was there any issue off the limits or off the table? And she said, bring it, come with it. She's mm -hmm. an open book. All right, so there was um, <laughs> certainly no, no mm -hmm. fear on either part. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you again for You're most being welcome, with us. my lady. All right. Mm -hmm. So we remain friends, viewers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the being with us this morning, viewers. We got lots more coming up on the Tobago updates uh, morning show. I want to thank all eight. Let me see eight. No, six hundred and eighty-eight. Uh, persons who are on the live with us this morning. We want to thank all of you, your questions and your comments. Sorry, we can't get to all of them. Uh, someone said, Ria, no more questions, please. Uh, Nana, please cue the music and the ads. All right, we're going to leave it there. So thank you again. Lots more coming up. So share the live, share the live, share the live. Even as we head on over to Tara Ernest and Veronica Leacock as we focus on digital innovation and technology for gender equality, which is the theme for International Women's Day 2023. Share the live, share the live, share the live.